end of the semester of the fall semester 2004-2005. Today is uh, January the 26th, 2005. What I'm going to do today is uh, first demonstrate how to cut off the clay, how to wedge it, and I'm going to make a one and a quarter pound cylinder tall, and then I'm going to make a two pound bowl. They're both going to be thrown on bats. And I'm going to just go over basically the, the steps that's involved in each of them. So, so when you cut your clay, you always want to cut the clay off uh, horizontally. So I want a pound and a quarter. And when you cut, you always want to pull the wire so it's straight. What you don't want to do is cross the wire like this because that puts a kink in the wire and it can cut through your skin. I like to keep a thumb on the clay as I pull it through. Then there's a bunch of clay here that gets attached to the wire. It's a good habit to get into to wipe that clay off and return it to your piece of clay. Then you can take your hunk of clay and measure it to see how much you've got. So right now this is a little teeny bit over two, so I'll save that for my bowl. And <clears throat> I need about a pound and a quarter, so let's see what this will be. Okay, so that's a little bit more than a pound and a half. So I'll just have to remove a little bit. That's a pound and a quarter. And this is clay that's been recycled. You, you can see the pockets of air in it. So I'm going to also now show you how to wedge it. So when you use recycled clay, you need to spend a little bit of time to get rid of the air. I'm going to do it right here on the wheel. Normally, it's done on the wedging table. <clears throat> Actually, I never use the wedging table when I'm using porcelain or white stoneware. The plaster that the wedging table is made of uh, makes the clay less plastic. It's OK to wedge red stoneware or dark brown stoneware on it, but the easy way to remember it is the famous porcelain is called wedge wood. And so just remember, for porcelain, you always want to wedge it on wood or on a cloth surface or a plastic surface, but not on the plaster table. Now, when you're wedging, what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep your, your wrists straight. And you're trying to keep the palms of the hands facing each other. You, it's good if you can overlap your fingers this way. And, and you're using the muscles in, in your armpits, basically. So kind of feeling like you're playing an accordion. You, you stand it up on the tip. You put your, reposition your two hands on the side, mostly push in, and just a little bit down away from you. And if you get into a rhythm of it, um, usually you want to do it 20 or 30 times. Normally, I would be standing up and using my legs instead of my shoulders and my arms. And I'm trying to find if I could see a little air pocket. That may have been an air pocket, perhaps right there. It, it just looks like a little teeny black hole, kind of like <clears throat> when you go to the La Brea tar pits and you see, or when you're making spaghetti sauce and you see that bubble burst. It looks sort of like that. You can also sometimes hear them pop. When you, when you see one of those bubbles pop or hear it, you want to do 10 more of these. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So after you've done 30 of these and you get through another 10 without any air, then you, and it sort of looks like a ram's head with the nose and the ears and the horns and all that. And at the end, you roll it up so it looks sort of like a, a russet potato. You just kind of roll that flap over. And then it's the left end that you want to put down and make your cone. So I just pick it up and drop it on the left end because that way you heal the flap as it goes around. So that is my one and a quarter pound ball that's ready for the cylinder. Now, uh, okay, let me show you something. This clay has some parts on it that's like mashed potatoes. It's, it's just really, really soft. And other parts are kind of stiff, kind of more like uh, cream cheese or something. So you can rip it in half and then slam the two together and then kind of squash it a little bit. Did he say yes? Did he say yes? Oh. So you can basically just flatten it, rip it, and slam it. And this is another great way to recycle clay. Um, 
that has hard and soft uh, pieces. But you always have to keep the layers going the same way. So before I, I'll do my regular wedging, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, that's a way of, of taking gooey stuff and hard stuff and making it a little more uniform. Try to use my legs a little more. Okay, that's an air pocket right there. You can see it very, very clearly. So you would count to 10 again. <coughs> one, two, three, four, five. I heard one, so I go, go back to one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten. But I, th I think there's probably still a few more in there, so I'm going to do a few more. So, so it's standing it up on the tip, pushing your hands towards each other, trying to keep your hands as close together as possible and as straight as possible. The more your arms are out, the more you're kind of stressing out your, your wrists. So try to keep your elbows in towards the center of your body. And you can kind of feel when it all feels uniform. Okay, and then I'm going to just roll the tip around. And again, left end goes down into a point. If you're not going to trim, it's a good idea to take all of these lines and just kind of smooth them. Usually bowls I trim, so this step is, is not as important as it is with my one and a quarter pound that's going to be my cylinder. Okay. The tools we're going to be using today, it's the cutoff wire. It's the sponge. This is called the wooden rib. We're going to use that to scrape. We're going to use our needle tool. We're going to use our wooden cutoff stick, mostly this end at the end, and the flexible metal rib. It's better if you bend your tool if you haven't already. I might also use another uh, rubber rib too. And then <clears throat> the chamois to, to finish the edges. Okay, so the basic steps are I'm going to center it. I'm going to open the floor, which will be flat on the cylinder. I'm going to compress the floor. And I'm going to do what's called the preparation or setup step, D step. And then I'm going to raise the walls. So, first step, you turn on your um, wheel. It's your responsibility to check to make sure that these hooks are completely hooked around on both sides. And actually, while the wheel is turned off and the foot pedal is in the off position, it's your responsibility before you start to check underneath with your fingers to make sure that no one has left any tools, especially if they had left a cutoff wire under it. Then when you, we're assured that it's safe to turn it on, then you turn it on the switch and slowly, with your left foot, make the wheel go as slow as it'll possibly go. I'm going to use my hands in a heart position. The tips of my fingers are going to scrape along the bottom while my palms are going to press down. And it's kind of like a beating heart. What I'm trying to do with the palms, it pushes out the base. So wherever the base is in too far, by pressing down with the palms, that helps to widen it. If it's sticking out too far somewhere, my fingertips are busy coming in. So I usually do this about 20 or 30 times. You could also mark it. You could put a little piece of clay and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I had 14 of those heartbeats for one revolution. Anything above 10 is a good number. 12 is usually a good ratio of how, how many times you're pressing to how fast the wheel goes around. Okay. Then I'm going to just speed it up and check it. I'm going to mark it with my sponge just to see how close I am to the center. And as you can see, it's really wide right here. 
and over here it's quite narrow. So I have to shove it in here or press it out more. So it's easier to just probably stop your wheel and just bring it in so it's all the same distance. You could also do it with the wheel going real slow. Usually you're looking at those guidelines that are on the wheel head, but today I'm using a bat, so there are no guidelines. Okay, now I'm going to speed it up at medium speed. This was all done with dry hands. I'm going to push in and down at the bottom to create a seal so that the, um, the clay won't come off the bat. Then I'm going to wash my hands with my sponge so there's nothing but water on my skin. And then I'm going to put quite a bit of water on the clay, get it to about a medium speed, and for centering, basically it's the left palm is pressing down, the left fingers are pulling in, your stomach is pulling in, and your right fingers are pulling in. So it's the right three fingers, left hand, press down with the left, pull in with the right, one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, and stop. Today I'm working with white stoneware, and as you can see, this part got pretty dry, pretty dry. So I either had too much pressure or I stayed on just a little bit too long. White clay is a little harder to work with than red. Um, I see that the top is pretty good, my corner's not bad, but the side is really not good enough. So, and I'd also like to make it a little lower and a little wider, so I'm going to press down harder with this one and let this hand go out some. So I'm going to push down. And after I, I was counting myself silently, after I got to count two, I ran out of water again. But this is the pattern you're basically looking for in your hand. You want to have it clay here, clean clay here. These three do the side, this one does the top, and this one right here does the corner. And that's acceptable. That's good enough. So I'm going to go to the next step. It, it's, not, it's not terribly bumpy, so I'm going to go to the next step. I'm going to stop the wheel, measure it just to see how thick it is in the center. So that's how thick it is right now. And what I want to do is I want to leave about this, this much as my base. So the difference between my fingers is how far down I'm going to drop the hole. So I'm going to make a fist. My right hand, press it up against my left hand. Push down. OK, I'm going to stop and measure again. OK, so that's, that's pretty much what I want. Now I'm going to open the floor. You can use both thumbs. You could hook your right hand and press it against your left hand and pull back. That would be another way. I'm going to go back to my thumbs. And I actually want to open it up quite far. You can stop and measure again to see how thick you went. So that's, that's what I've got, which is still acceptable. Now what I want to do is go back and forth, keeping my fingers curled going along the radius from 5 o'clock towards the center, getting it flat. Then I'm going to go from 5 o'clock towards the center, take about 10 seconds, and this is to compress the floor so the center is actually rising. Can you see that? So what I, I want you to look for the center. See, right now it's pretty much flat, so I want to show you. I'll stop halfway there. So you can see now that the center is higher. I'm going in an angle this time. The first few times I do it, my fingers are vertical. And the next couple of times, they're at an angle. And then I just press through so it's flat again. So it's just a test to show you that you compressed it all the way. Well, I would think so. OK, good. So, you're not worried about the camera getting clay on it, right? Okay, so now this is the re really important set up step, okay? It's the left hand is on the side. Right now, it's pretty thick, thin right here, and it's pretty thick right here. So, I'm going to press in at 9 o'clock on the outside towards 3 o'clock, and I'm going to press so hard that this is going to become flat right here. That's why it's called the D step. Then, the right hand it's going to be not at the bottom, but halfway up in the middle. And it's just going to thin this upper rim and drag it in. So I'm going to do it all together. The left hand is pushing against the right. The, the left hand makes a circle like this. The right hand is up against it. 
All the fingers are curved in the right hand. So I'm going to press in. Do you see how it's getting flat right there? Press in with the left hand. So it's okay because I ran out of water anyway. But you can see how the, the clay had gotten all in my hand there. So it's the left hand is pushing across. And this part of your thumb is pushing down on the top just a little bit to keep it flat. Your thumb in here. So now I'm going to press in. Squeeze the top in. So I'm thinning the top and dragging it in. So it kind of ends up looking like a plumber's plunger. And this part is now thinner, and this part is now thicker. Actually, it's the thickest right here. But, but this part is now thinner, whereas before it was thicker. Okay. And you can see the, the pattern that was on the hand. This was on the side, that was on the top, and all these fingers were working. All right. So now I'm going to go and do my first pull. I push out with my left longest finger, and see if you can just see that this whole is, side is going to get longer. I push out, I push in with my right hand, and I lift and squeeze in. Okay, I don't know if you could hear it, but my foot actually slowed the wheel down. So I was kind of mimicking what happens to you on a kick wheel. Right now I'm just thickening the rim and trying to get it more even and rounded. I feel down the walls. Now it feels pretty much uniform, except it's a little thinner up here, which is what we want. Now I'm going to bulldoze by pushing out with my left fingers. I'm going to use my thumb and bridge to my right hand, and my right thumb is going to come under and scrape and clean the uh, corner. And the only way you can kind of get water to it is by feeding the water this way to the outside. Okay, so now please watch for a pocket on the next one. I'm going to push out, push under, lift up. So this is, this is the basic thing you want. You want the base wider, the top narrower, and you're always thinning the walls. You, you feel down and ask your stomach for permission to do another pull. If, if it there feels like there's plenty of clay there, and then you do another bulldoze. So each time I bulldoze, I'm actually bringing the, the base in. I'm walking the foot in. If this is getting to be too wide at the top, you can make your hands like a triangle. And then from a top view, you actually will see a triangle as you thin it. Always mash the rim down. Compress the rim after every pull up. That'll make it stronger and more flat. Okay, so I'm going to go for another pocket. This time, uh, my left hand is inside. It's just my right index finger on the outside, and my left thumb is being a bridge to my right hand. So push out first with the left hand, out first, push under, and lift. There, now you see the pocket. And it's more a sense of lifting up than it is squeezing. And in the beginning, you're pressing harder with your inside hand from here up to here. Then, halfway up, you're pressing harder with the outside hand from here up to the top. Okay, each time you feel and ask your stomach if you, if you think, you know, there's plenty of clay down there or not. Don't leave a bunch of water on the floor. Take, take your sponge and, and wring out your sponge so there's no water in your sponge. Hold it down on the floor so you mop up the floor. But you want to leave it on the walls. And you can't see it from here. Actually, I could show it to you. There's a, it's okay. There's a really good corner in there, see? You see the corner? Oh, at the very Sorry. bottom of the bowl? Yeah, the inside corner? I think so. It's a little there, up, 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 up right there. Up right there. So that's a really great corner. So it doesn't look like a test tube on the inside. And that's, that's another thing you kind of want to have is a good corner on the inside and the outside. If, you, if it looks like a test tube on the inside, <coughs> what that means is you weren't working hard enough with your left hand. So I'm going to do another pull. I'm going to bulldoze again. So see, I'm, I'm going for something that's eventually going to be straight. And I still have a lot of nice clay down here, so I'm going to kind of park my head over here towards 2 o'clock, push out, push under. But if you have a mirror, it's better to watch in the mirror. Okay, so it, it was a little thin. I, I took off a little too deep of a bite there, so it's starting to torque at the bottom, but that's okay. Uh, and if you wanted to try to thin out this top part, you could do a mini pull, too. If you felt like you still had some clay up here, you could just start from where you think it's thicker. And remember, our membership in the chamois club is twice the diameter equals the height. 
And I don't, I don't think I'm going to make chamois club with this one. My clay's a little too wet. Yeah, that, that would be chamois club, so I didn't quite make it. Just for fun, I'm going to see if I can do one more pull. This, this is not perfect, but let's see if I can get a little bit more out of it. My right arm is braced into my body. Okay, let me see if that helped with chamois club. There's my diameter. No, I'm still shy a little bit, so I won't try again, but, but just try to get your height greater than your width. All right, and then I'm going to just shape it a little bit. Before I do, I'm going to tidy up my rim. I'm not going to trim a foot on this one. So I'm just using the flat part of this to go under to clean it up a little. That helps the air to get there. You can use your sponge and kind of dry it off. You can use your... Oh, Pamela, that kind yeah. of work. What? It'd be better if you get, did it more in front of you than on the side. Oh, yeah? Okay. If, oh, if that's yeah, yeah. So this way, under. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. And then um, if you had too much clay here, this is how you would cut it off. I'll just cut off a teeny bit. I don't really have too much, but this is how you, well, I'll do it for the bowl. That's okay. Um, I do want to flare this out though, because it's easier to, is that good right there? Mm -hmm. See how it flares out? Then um, it's easier when you glaze to hold on to it. And then I'm going to just put a few little lines, a few little lines in right here. Oh, see, I had coffee, so my hands are shaking. All right. And then I'm going to just, I'm going to leave the lines on the outside, but I'm going to, I'm going to uh, support my hand on the outside, and I'm going to use the rib on the inside just to get rid of all those throwing marks. And this is where you could change the shape of it if you wanted to. If you wanted to make it puffy. This is basically how we do vases as well. I'm just trying to make it smooth on the inside. Um, if you wanted to make it more round or something, you could. Let's say right here we wanted it more round, you could do that. So I'm using the tip part of the rib more than the flat part, and then I'm going all the way down to the corner. There, that looks a little nicer. And then you just wipe all that off. Just wipe all that off, sorry. And then um, chamois. I usually chamois the rim just so it's round. Because this is where your mouth is going to go. You don't want to leave, you don't want to leave all those little sharp edges. The chamois, you hold it and support it from the outside. Loosely let it drape over the inside and then use your thumbs to make it smooth. The thicker the rim, the harder it is to drink out of, but the longer it's going to last. The thinner the rim, the easier it's to drink out of, but it's going to chip sooner. So that's basically it. If you were going to trim it, you would cut it off. I'm not going to. I'm going to let it just pop off of here. In about a day or two, I'll add a handle, but I would, I, I, I hook the tool around like this, pull under. But this one I'm going to just let pop off. Okay, I won't talk so much for the next one. Um, I'll just pretty much do it. It's the bowl. The only difference on this one is I'm going to make a rounded bottom bowl. What's in the other one? Okay, so here we go. I'm going to kind of grind this like it's a grapefruit or orange. Juicing an orange. Just get it so it's stuck on here. Just trying to get it in the middle, make sure that it's actually stuck on here and that it's in the center. Oh, you need to go on the other side. Okay, I'm going to seal it to the wheel. For a bowl, you kind of are thinking, do you want to have something that's more... Mm, 
like square shaped or something more like a pie pan that has a very flat bottom or something you just put on a mantelpiece. And generally I like things that are kind of more mm, kind of square shaped, they're more functional. So my hunk of clay when I center it is going to be a little more square shaped than quite so low and wide as my last one. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now I wanted to show you a different technique and that's using a spoon. Okay, okay so you gotta give it a little bit of water and you, so you don't poke yourself uh, with the handle to keep it outside. And I'm gonna rotate the spoon, start at the edge and then come down towards the center. And if you curve it like that, you, you don't really remove much material at all. So I start at the edge Press down. I'm pressing really hard down in the center. I'm pressing about 20 pounds of pressure or so. Um, oh, and then every once in a while you want to stop because it's possible to get too thin down here. Now, if you make a round, I think I might have gone too far. If you make a rounded bottom bowl, these you do have to trim. Oh, God. So I don't want to go any more than that. So I'm done with the spoon. I'm, I'm sorry, I pressed a little too hard. Too bad. So now I'm going to use my fingers and do that compression business again. Okay, also I can feel some air pockets in here, so let me see if I can bring the air pocket to the surface. It's either an air pocket or a little hard piece of something. But this would be another way to open so that you're compressing and opening at the same time. And I hope you could see how it kind of popped up in the center there. Did you kind of see that? Good, okay. So that, that's good. Now I'm going to do the D-step again, but this time I'm going to let the whole thing go out. Instead of drag it in, I'm going to let it go out. So this is still here. This is still there. This, these are still touching. These are still pushing really hard. I'm going to start not, not at the center, but right about in the middle. Squeeze and let it come up. So now what I'm trying to do is establish the walls and separate them from... The base, and you kind of can roll your right hand, your right thumb, like this, so it, so that it makes a rounded corner. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to make a trumpet shape. Let me go back. Okay. Okay. So it's it's much thinner here. It's about this thick, and down here it's about one and a half times that. So what I want to do, I still want to maintain a nice round feeling on the floor. But what I want to do is I want to make like a reverse bowl. And what you can do is you can use your sponge, but squeeze it so that the water's coming off your fingertips. Don't put your sponge against your pot. Hold it in the palm of your hand. Okay. So I'm going to push. I'm going to push out with my inside hand. I'm going to push in with my outside hand. Lift it up. There we go. Now I'm going to slow it down a little bit as I get to the edge. Now it's thinner at the top, so I don't have to press so hard. And then after you make a pull up, always condition the rim, mash the rim back down again. Feel down the wall, see how you did. It's really nice. It's a little too fast, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. I'm going to keep, oh, don't let a big lake up here in the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and do another pull. Oh, wait, bulldoze, sorry. Now, uh, you can either use your thumb to bulldoze like normal. And you do end up taking off a little bit. If you take a little more time, you probably won't take that much clay off. If you can't get your hand in there, then this is where you would use your um, wooden cutoff stick. And you can just use that instead of your thumb, if your thumb doesn't fit. Always feed water this way. Okay, so here goes another pull. Hopefully you'll see another nice pocket. There, there's the pocket. And I still want to throw a trumpet shape. So this is where I'm kind of thinking about where I want the rim to be. Now this clay is kind of wet, so I can't, I can't take it out too far because it'll just fall. Um, you always compress the rim. And now I'm going to make my finger go underneath to create a, a, a better lip. So it, I'm defining the walls from the rim by using the back side of my index finger. Okay. Now, before, and, and I'm not going to do any more pulls, that, that was fine. So before I, I lay it out, I'm going to go under it with the flexible metal rib, 
just to make it easier to cut off this extra little support. We don't want to leave too much of that there. So this is where we're going to use the curved part. Put, it's good if you kind of scoot your chair back and put your elbows on your legs, put your wrists on the splash pan and hold the stick so you have space between your fingers. And take about 10 seconds. You press in, first you make a high contact. Then you press in as you go downwards. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You can see how I lost a little bit of contact right there in the middle. Then you can either go under it again with this one, or you could have used your needle tool. Stop the wheel, and cut, and just peel. If you cut enough of it off, it comes right off. If you're too skimpy and you don't cut enough, it's really hard to peel that off. So try to, try to cut enough off. All right. And now what I'm going to do, so, so that when I go to trim, that is a machine round cut as opposed to a thrown base, which is harder to center. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is change this basic form. I'm going to start at the top. Little by little, it's thicker down here, so I have to uh, go slower with my descent and push a little harder. I'm trying to work at 5 o'clock. And I'm actually using my thighs to squeeze against this to help stabilize myself. Okay, And then every once in a while you want to look to see how does the outside look compared to how does the inside look. If you wanted to lay the rim out more at this time, you could open it up a little more. Oh, yeah, sorry. I usually uh, take a little piece of clay after I've cleaned up the wheel bat. Generally, when you're doing round bottom bowls, you always want to throw in a bat. And I like to put a little splat of clay. Every time that goes around, twice, I want to go down. So I see the splat once, I see the splat twice. So I make contact one, two, and then go down. One, two, go down. One, two. So I'm trying to use that little splat to help me know when I should move. Otherwise, you end up putting a big spiral in the piece. It's kind of nice if you can uh, put your head in a place where you can see the inside and the outside at the same time. You can shift your vision from the inside to the outside. Because what you want to do is you want to get a nice curve. You don't want to have it sort of dead looking. It's looking pretty good up here, up here, but it's, it's kind of dead looking here. But the question is, how far can you poof it out without having it collapse? You can make a parabolic curve, or you can make a hemisphere, a half, half a sphere. So depending on what part of this tool. OK, so I might have just pushed it a little too hard there. We'll see. Oh, that, that looks much nicer. See, that's a nice curve now. So that's pretty much done. And then for fun, um, well, first I'm going to get rid of the water. For fun, I like to put a little spiral in the bottom. I just put my finger in the middle and bring it up to the edge a little bit and then wipe it off with the sponge again. So just make more interesting glaze patterns. OK, use my uh, chamois. Go from the outside first. I'm holding the chamois, not with my thumbs at all. It's, it's, it's held between my index and middle finger. So wrap it around the outside first. Wrap it around the outside first. Then come around the inside just so you get it nice and round. The glaze will stay on a round edge during the high fire if you don't have any sharp places on it. So if you leave a sharp corner, it's more likely for it to. Um, for the glaze to run. Now I'm going to take a piece of newspaper and put it on top of it before I cut it off. And that's going to help keep it dimensionally stable when I cut it. 
So as you, if you've ever done photography before, you can kind of see the image of the circle coming up. Sometimes you have to help it along a little bit. You're just trying to get the newspaper to stick all the way around. And these bat, bats flex, too, when you take them off. So I'm going to make the wool go as slow as I possibly can. I'm keeping the wire. Do you see how it's digging into my skin? I am going to try to keep the wire as taut as possible without poking the bowl with my fingers or my hands. So first I cut the outer edge, then I'm cutting the middle portion, and then I go all the way through to the center. Sometimes it'll move a little bit, it'll kind of jump. Keep pulling it. So as you can see, I was pushing down. I was pushing down with my fingertips and keeping this thing really taut. The problem is if you have not enough tension, you see how the wire kind of rides up in the middle? So that's why you have to keep pulling it and pressing down with your finger. So that's done. I leave the paper on there, turn off the wheel, and carefully lift it off of here. The bat is stuck more on one of them, so get the harder one off first, and then you just easily lift the second one off. And I wrap this, I leave it out for a couple of hours, and then I'm going to wrap it with a piece of plastic for about a week or so. Then I'm going to measure it, turn it over, and trim it. So that's it.